Welcome once again on my YouTube channel. Let me discuss this time the 9 events of instruction by Robert Ganey. This model is a systematic process that helps instructional designers to develop strategies and create activities for instructional classes. To know more about Robert Ganey, he was an educational psychologist who created the 9-step process called the events of instruction. He was best known for his conditions of learning. He was involved in applying instructional theory to the design of computer-based learning. He is best known for his learning outcomes, learning conditions and nine events of learning. The nine events provide a framework for an effective learning process. The steps give designers an outline to use prior to performing teaching activities. The nine events of instruction can be divided into three segments, namely preparation or gaining attention, informing learners of the objectives and stimulating recall of prior learning are included. Then the next is instruction and practice where presenting the stimulus, providing learning guidance, eliciting performance and providing feedback are taken into consideration. The last segment is the assessment and transfer where assessing performance and enhancing retention and transfer are considered. To start with the first event of learning which is gaining attention, it is a must to capture the attention of your student in order for any learning to take place. Another better way to capture students' attention is to start each lesson with a thought-provoking question or interesting fact. Curiosity motivates students to learn. Ensure the learners are ready to learn and participate in activities by presenting a stimulus to capture their attention. These are a few methods for capturing learners' attention. First, stimulate students with novelty, uncertainty, and surprise, then. Pose thought-provoking questions to students. Next is to have students pose questions to be answered by other students and last but not the least. Lead an icebreaker activity. After gaining the attention, the next event is informing the learners of the objectives. Once your learners are engaged, they need to know what to expect from your learning experience. This helps your audience understand the full picture. Providing expectations around what they will learn helps put your audience in a learning mindset. Here are some of the tips for stating objectives. Explain what the audience will learn and why it is important. Describe the goals and outcomes of the learning experience. Explain how this information will benefit the learners. Next event is stimulating recall of prior learning. In this step, the goal is to activate the recall of the old knowledge. Once the old knowledge is recalled, or remembered, it makes it easier to connect the dots to new information. Tips for stimulating recall. 1. Ask questions from the last lesson. 2. Conduct pop quizzes. 3. Post discussion board questions related to prior knowledge. 4. Perform pre-tests to understand what the audience already knows and 5. Create lesson plans that build upon each other. The fourth event is presenting the content. This event of instruction is where the new content is actually presented to the learner. Content should be chunked and organized meaningfully, and typically is explained and then demonstrated. To appeal to different learning modalities, a variety of media should be used if possible, including text graphics, audio narration, and video. At this point, Ganey recommends that you present the instructional content. You should break the content into chunks to make it easier to digest, and you should provide examples to help your audience learn from. In the context of e-learning, content may come in the form of animated videos, text-based slides, PDFs, narrated slideshows, and so much more. It's up to you to ensure that your content is aligned with your learning objectives. The next event is providing guidance. Advise students of strategies to aid them in learning content and of resources available. In other words, help students learn how to learn. The following are examples of methods for providing learning guidance. 
provide instructional support as needed, that is scaffolding that can be removed slowly as the student learns and masters the task or content. Then, model varied learning strategies, like mnemonics, concept mapping, role playing, visualizing. Use examples and non-examples, examples help students see what to do, while non-examples help students see what not to do. Provide case studies, visual images, analogies, and metaphors. Case studies provide real-world application, visual images assist in making visual associations, and analogies and metaphors use familiar content to help students connect with new concepts. Next is eliciting performance. Have students apply what they have learned through practice to reinforce new skills and knowledge and to confirm correct understanding of course concepts. Here are a few ways to activate learner processing. Facilitate student activities, like ask deep learning questions, have students collaborate with their peers, facilitate practical laboratory exercises. Provide formative assessment opportunities, like written assignments, individual or group projects, presentations. Design effective quizzes and tests, that is, test students in ways that allow them to demonstrate their comprehension and application of course concepts, as opposed to simply memorization and recall. The next event is providing feedback. After the learner attempts to demonstrate their knowledge, provide immediate feedback of students' performance to assess and facilitate learning and to allow students to identify gaps in understanding before it is too late. The following are some types of feedback you may provide to students. One is confirmatory feedback informs the student that they did what they were supposed to do. This type of feedback does not tell the student what she needs to improve, but it encourages the learner. Be positive and at the same time objective. Next is evaluative feedback giving information to student of the accuracy of their performance or response but does not provide guidance on how to progress. Another one is remedial feedback directs students to find the correct answer but does not provide the correct answer. Then descriptive or analytic feedback provides the student with suggestions, directives, and information to help them improve their performance. Lastly, peer evaluation and self-evaluation help learners identify learning gaps and performance shortcomings in their own and peers' work. The next event is Assessing Performance In order to evaluate the effectiveness of the instructional events, administer a test. To determine whether the expected learning outcomes have been achieved on previously stated course objectives, some methods for testing learning include the following. Administer pre- and post-tests to check for progression of competency and content or skills. Embed formative assessment opportunities throughout instruction using oral questioning, short active learning activities, or quizzes. Implement a variety of assessment methods to provide students with multiple opportunities to demonstrate proficiency. Craft objective, effective rubrics to assess written assignments, projects, or presentations. The last event is enhancing retention and transfer. Give the learner resources that enhance retention and transfer of knowledge. Repeated practice with effective feedback is the best way to ensure that people retain information and use it effectively. Help learners retain more information by providing them opportunities to connect course concepts to potential real-world applications. The following are methods to help learners internalize new knowledge. First, avoid isolating course content. Associate course concepts with prior concepts and build upon prior learning to reinforce connections. Second, continually incorporate questions from previous tests in subsequent examinations to reinforce course information. Third, have students convert information learned in one format into another format. For instance, requiring students to create a concept map to represent connections between ideas. Lastly, to promote deep learning. 
clearly articulate your lesson goals, use your specific goals to guide your instructional design, and align learning activities to lesson goals. Thank you for listening and see you on the next lesson.